Hey guys, how you going? My name's Carnage, and welcome back to another Boom Beach video. In today's video, we got a really interesting topic to talk about, actually, and it's something that not many people talk about, and that is how to predict the walking path of each Zooka that is on your screen. Every single Zooka that you deploy, you can predict that working path to like the exact measurement, like to the exact like location. And it, it's actually, it's a little bit difficult at times, but it is actually a very easy thing to learn. So that's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoy the, the content and the video and appreciate just how much work the, these guides actually take to, for me to make. So. Uh, let's get into it. Okay, so when you're predicting a walking path, the very first thing you need to know is where is where's, where's the troops starting from and where are they going to? So that's... You, you, you'd think that would be like an easy thing to know. It's pretty straightforward, but you'd actually be surprised to know that most people don't actually know where the troop ends at because a very because of a very common misconception. So, um, you can see I've dropped some troops here, and I want you to pay very close attention to where I dropped the flare, and exactly where the Zookas walk to. Uh, so it doesn't matter if I lose any troops, but I've got them uh, they're all okay. Okay. So, if you paid attention to what just happened, you'll notice that when the Zookas walk to the flare, the flare's in the middle of the smoke there, but the Zookas didn't actually walk to the flare. Because if they were walking to the flare, what should have happened is all the Zookas should go right to the middle where the flare is and then separate and form this like circle sort of a group that they form, right? But they didn't do that. Some of the Zookas, some of them walked to the middle, but not all of them. Some of them actually walked straight away to the edge of the circle here. To the edge of the group. So, that's actually a very key point to note. That the Zookas aren't walking to the flare. They're actually walking near the flare. In particular, you can see, if you watched part 1 of the video, of the grouping... You'll know that the group's about a six grid square radius, thereabouts, um, and that's sort of like where they're going. They know where they're going to end up in this group, so they simply walk to that point. So if we look at the landing crafts here, the one on the far right, that was actually the Zookas right on the far right here on the edge of the circle. That's where they walked to. The, the, the landing craft on the far left here, when he walked, you can see that Zooka that's on the almost out of the smoke and the ones next to him, that was where that landing craft went. He didn't walk into the middle where the flare was and then out there, he walked straight to that point. So knowing this is actually a very key factor in being able to predict the walking path. The landing craft that's in the middle will always sort of form the front and the middle of the grouping, but the ones on the outside, as I mentioned, are the ones that go to the outside of this area. So, when I, I'm going to start showing you guys some examples, and we'll predict the walking path of them, but as I do that, I'm only going to predict the walking path of the ones outside, because... The landing craft on the outside are the ones that are going to cause you your problems. If you can keep those covered, everything else will be covered. Okay, so now we look at the next situation. This is a problem that arises and a lot of top players sort of have encountered this problem at one stage or another. Um, and it is something that sort of boggles the mind at first, but um, here it is anyway. In certain situations, 
when you flare the core, you'll, you'll find that your Zookas actually fan out into this line. And you think, you're thinking to yourself, well, that doesn't happen before. Why has it happened now? I don't understand. Well, here it is. The range of Azuka is exactly 7.2 grid squares in size. So if you don't know what a grid square is, if you edit your base like you move a building around, you'll see these little squares. That's what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so the Zuka is actually 7, has a range of 7.2. Now, being where they are, you'd think they'd target the closest possible point on the core, right? So if I target the core, if I count the grid squares here, the ones at the back are exactly seven squares in away from it right now. But, so you think none of them by rights should move, right? Because they are within range. Well, if they were next to the core, like in, in between this flamethrower and the shock launcher, they would be fine, and they wouldn't move, and nothing would happen. But because we're actually at the corner, what happens is they don't target the very edge of the core. Some of them do, yeah, but the ones at the back, for one, for some reason or another, and it boggles my mind as to why this is, some of them choose to target the actual squares next to the corner. So, instead of your range being 7, the ones at the back are targeting the edge, so your, the, the range of the ones at the back is more, in realistic, realistically, it's more like 6. So when you're at the corner, your range is basically 6. I mean, technically it's 7, but they're not targeting the same point, so you might as well just say it's shortened. So that's the problem, um, and I'm going to prove it right now by pressing play. I've just flared, and look at what the Zookas are doing. They're all fanning out to this line. They're getting killed. Um, you can you can actually see that where the Zookas were here, they they actually formed the line, and they were seven pixels away, right? They were seven grid squares away. Um, so how can you? solve this problem how can you fix this from happening to you well there is a few there is two ways your first option is to flare closer to the core to account for that like shortened range or if that's not an option for you or you're worried or you're scared or whatever you can instead of dropping one smoke like I did you can actually drop two smokes sort of overlapping each other a little bit so when they form that line and they spread out they're still covered under your smoke and they're going to be safe okay so welcome to the very first scenario we got here when it comes to predicting paths we're going to choose something very very simple the most straightforward scenario you can see where the flare is dropped and you can see that this is the exact moment that when the flare is actually dropped and placed on the battlefield. So that is the moment when every Zooka decides to pick where where she is going. So we look, we look at where they are right now. We already talked about where the Zookas are going to finish at. So we'll just run over that really quick just to summer, just go over it again. The ones on the farthest, furthest to the right are going to stop furthest on the right side of the flare. The ones on the left are actually going to stop left of the flare. Because that's the side of it that's closest. And because they're the ones on the outer, like the, the outest, like the furthest side, the ones that are like right on the very edge, that's where they're going to stop. Um, so let's look at this attack. Um, but before we do, I'll show the walking line, like a straight line to that path. And there's not really any buildings in our way here. But what there is in the way is this one boom cannon for the ones on the right side. And how does it pick its path to get to go around that building? It picks the side that is actually shortest. 
shortest to where it's going. And it also takes into account what side the flare is. In a very, very rare instance that the line is actually perfectly through the middle, it'll pick the side that's closest to where the flare is. So keep that in mind. But just remember that this game actually does work in decimal points, so it might look like it's in the middle sometimes, but it might actually be a touch to the right or a touch to the left. So without further ado, we've got the adjusted lines on the screen. You guys have seen that. So let's look at the attack and see if what we have predicted is correct. So you can see that the ones on the right here are walking to the right side of that boom cannon. That's because it was closer to the side it was stopping. And the ones on the left just had a straight, easy path. So that wasn't anything overly special. So that was our very first scenario. Okay guys, so now we've got our next scenario here. And you can see where the flare is dropped. You can see where the Zookas are, and there's actually a fair bit of buildings in our way. So, the very first thing you're probably going to ask yourself is, well, wow, like what, what are they going to go around? All that sort of thing. So, the very first thing you need to look at is the same sort of logic we've been doing. So, what side of the flare is each uh, troop going to go to? So, the ones on the right side here. It's going to go to the right side of the flare. The ones on the left are going to go to the left. Um, we, when I say left and right here, you've got to take into account like what direction the buildings are facing. So, um, actually, it's more like that zooka, like right there on the tip. Um, that would actually be considered the right. So anyway, no rambling. I've got. I'm going to show a straight line to each each uh, dead spot, oh, sorry not dead spot, uh, where they're going to walk to. Then I'm going, now I'm going to show you the adjusted line. Okay guys, so you pro you just seen the adjusted walking path on the screen, and you're probably asking yourself, that right path should be going through the left side of the machine gun, not the right side, so what, what am I doing here? Well, Here's the, here's the situation, and this is why I've included it in the guide, because it's a rare circumstance, but I want this to be complete, I want you to know everything about everything, so... The reason why this is happening, is because when Azuka chooses her walking path, she chooses the shortest possible path to get to that finishing spot that we've been talking about. Now, adjusting the path to be whatever side of the building it's closest to normally will give you that shortest possible path but there is something that you need to be aware of and this is why I'm talking about it if you if you see the the normal line on screen and I'm going to display it on screen now for you you can actually see that the first machine gun it's going to walk through the left side and the second one it's going to walk through the right side so, to walk through that path, it's going to have to walk a total of 7 grid squares to walk around that machine gun, right? But why would you do that? That is, that is a very long path to walk, right? Well, you'd actually be surprised to know that it takes the same amount of distance for her to walk diagonally to the opposite corner of that same machine gun. So, if it's going to take the same distance to walk to either corner, she's going to choose the shortest possible path to get through these machine guns. So, what do you think she's going to do? Do you think she's going to walk 7 grid squares to go around it if she chooses the left, or about 3, maybe 4 grid squares if she chooses the right side of it? Well, the answer to this is pretty obvious. She's going to walk to the right side because how the buildings are aligned it's shorter for her to walk to that side. So, those few Zookas on the edge, that's what they're going to do. And that's why I've chosen the adjusted walking path that I have. And it's something, as I mentioned, it doesn't come up too often. But I want you guys to be aware of all this stuff. So that when you go out into the, into the booming universe... You guys can see these situations and you'll know when they're going to pop up. You won't need to do it by eye and trial and error and all this stuff. 
you'll be able to actually see them. So, without further ado, let's get into the attack here and let's see what happens. So you can see the ones on the right here are walking right around the, the machine guns. He has placed his smokes very close together here, um, just to, to account for that. You can see the ones on the left are taking a path around the snipers and the boom cannons. Uh, sorry, the doom cannon. Um, so you can see how they walked there. He did actually drop two smokes where the MGs were. He might have been able to get away with one if it was very, very well placed. Um, but that doesn't really matter. So, you can see that the walking paths that we're taking here, and how we're actually figuring out where they're going to go. So, um, it's just the same process over and over and over again. But you can see that where he's flaring, it wasn't a perfect straight path, but it was pretty close to it. And that's what you want to do. You want to make your flares between each one like you want it to be a perfect straight line so that they stay like tighter together the path easier to predict and you don't have to worry too much about what's in the way so uh, without further ado let's go to the next scenario and let's predict some more paths in some different situations so now we're going to look at our first scenario with corners you can see we have one corner here it's against the very edge of the beach um, something weird happens though, and I'm going to sh I'm going to show you in very slow motion um, the actual sequence that it happens in. But cut a long, really long story short, as we've discussed up until this point, when you've got like a heap of zookas, the ones on the right side will take the right side of the flare, the ones on the left will take the left side of the flare, and that's how we've known it for up until this point but something changes when they go around a corner or when they come in contact with a corner in the way that they in the way that I'm about to show what happens is instead of the ones on the left taking the path of like right up to the left side of the flare two paths are drawn and they are drawn the same way but instead of the zookas on the left actually taking that same path that they normally would on the left, they will walk to the line that's on the right, that the right would, Zookas would normally take. So they will walk diagonally to get to that path, and then they will take the Zookas on the right path. And the Zookas that started off on the right side will actually walk to the left a little bit, and then they'll take the path that they would have normally taken. So it is very confusing, and I do apologize for that, and it is something that's a little hard to predict and determine. But if you ever want to reset it, just group them up somewhere on a building near the beach and then you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to look like a pro, then this is the way to do it. So let's jump into this and watch it in slow motion. So you can see they touched the corner and now they're walking backwards to walk to the left side. So if you draw a line from where the troops are on the right to where they would normally walk, you'll see that that line actually passes through where the corner is. To know where the corner actually is, when you press on a troop before you deploy, you'll see like a white border around um, the beach of where you're able to drop the troops. That is basically the area that they're able to walk. Anything beyond that is considered the corner. So you got to keep that in mind. So now you have to predict the path based on one corner. So I want you to pay very close attention to the Zookas on the left side here that aren't under the smoke. And I want you to watch what they do. So you can see they're walking diagonally to the right side. And the ones on the left they didn't really have to do much because that path was actually very close to where they would have started from anyway so they didn't have to do much but you can see the flares up the top here so I'm going to now show the walking lines um, that each one's going to take I'm not going to draw the diagonal line that they walked 
that those Zookas walk to. Because as I've explained, the Zookas on the left side have to walk to that walking path before they can start taking it. So, um, anyway, you guys can see the path now. Um, it's a straight line. Now I'm going to show you the adjusted path. So, taking into account what side of the building is closest and what path will be shorter for them to get there. Um, we adjust that line accordingly so we know what buildings they're going to walk around. So, now we can watch the attack normal. Uh, you can see the ones on the right side here, they go around the mortar. The ones on the left walk around the mortar. Um, some are getting blasted. So now we're going to turn it into one times. And you can see they're all grouping up at the corner here because the line was actually closest to the left side of the core. Um, now they have to walk to their finishing spot. And some have been blasted, so, um, you know, you gotta account for that. But I'll, this brings up me to my next point. When a flare is against the wall, we haven't seen this yet. When a flare is against the wall like that, in the past, it's been out in the open, and we've we've seen that they group up three pixels to the right of it, and three pixels to the left of it. Thereabouts, it might be like 2.5 or 2.7 or some weird decimal point like that. But for the most part, that's what they do. Because there was a wall in the way and the flare was on the wall, what happens is they do increase um, how big they group up a little bit. So instead of being three grid squares away from the flare to the right, it'll be more like four because they've grouped up a little bit more. They have to spread out a bit more. Okay guys, so now we're going to discuss two corner flares. Um, I apologize in advance for the quality of this part of the video. Um, just for the simple reason that I've had to watch another YouTube video to actually be able to get this footage on this base. Um, I looked around for a number of days and couldn't find the footage, so I just settled for this. Uh, so I hope you guys understand. Um, but anyway, let's get into the, con the topic of the video. Okay, so unlike one corner flares, where the walking line is actually drawn from where the corner is, Two corner flares is completely different. We draw the line from Azuka, like we like we do in normal scenarios, but unlike where they finish, isn't isn't normal. See, in in a normal scenario, our Zukas that are on the left side would pick the left side of the flare to walk to, but in two corner flares, it's actually reversed. So. Instead of picking the left side of the flare, they pick the right side of the flare. And the Zookas that are on the right would pick the left side. So they will pick the side of the flare that's actually furthest away from them. If that makes any sense. So, I'll show you guys the path uh, on screen right now. And now I'll adjust, I'll show you the adjusted path where we go around all the buildings and so on and so forth like we have been throughout the video. Um, now we've seen the walking line here. You guys can see where they're walking. So you guys can see they split up there at that second cannon and now they're walking along. Uh, so it's very similar to the one corner flare that we've been talking about. The only difference is the walking line actually starts from the Zuka like before. And what side that the Zuka walks to is still reversed like always when it comes to corners. So, um, well, I guess this is the end of the video. I've discussed everything that I can possibly talk about um, when it comes to walking paths. I've thrown in as much content here as I possibly could. So, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know in the comments down below what you thought, um, if this was helpful. If there's anything that I missed out on, uh, be sure to let me know. 
this is really just like a theory of stuff that I've compiled from all my years of experience on Boom Beach. Um, I've been playing for a long time and without being a programmer for Supercell there's no real way to say this is the way it happens. All I can tell you is how I predict the paths based on all my experience and as you've seen from all the various examples my theories can be applied to so many different bases and you still can figure out the exact path that the Zookas are going to take so obviously they they work um, so I hope they really help you out and I'll see you in the next video